be sent from Syria, from the side of Syria, to fight this Muslim ruler, that would be Imam al-Mahdi, the new Khalifa of uh, the Muslims. And that army would be sent into the earth at a point, at a place called Baida. And that place would be between Makkah al-Mukarramah and Madina al-Munawwara. And that would be a big sign of Imam al-Mahdi and this hadith continues on saying that when people would see this situation that the army has been sent into the earth, that the army has been buried into the earth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the best people of Syria would come over and take their bay'ah and show their allegiance to the same person. Imam al Mahdi. Then Imam al Mahdi would be the one who would rule the Muslims according to the Sunnah of Nabi Muhammad. And after that, Islam would be established on the earth and he will rule the Muslims for seven years. There would be a huge trial that would come to this Ummah. And such would be the situation. That nobody would find any refuge from that trial. Then, فَيَبْعَثُ اللَّهُ رَجُلًا مِنْ عِطْرَةِ وَأَهْلِ بَيْتِ The Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that when that would be the case, that no Muslim would be safe from the trials, would be safe from the hard times, would be safe from a tribulation, from fitna, from zul. Then Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَيَبْعَثُ اللَّهُ رَجُلًا مِنْ عِطْرَةِ then Allah would make a person rise from the lineage of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ahli bayti, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used both words, itrati wa ahli bayti, that he would be from my lineage and also from my household. فَيَمْلَأُ بِهِ الْأَرْضَ قِسْتًا وَعَدْلًا كَمَا مُلِئْتَ ظُلْمًا وَجَوْرًا And that person, Allah would enable him. He would have Allah's blessings with him. He would fill the earth with a system of justice. Just like the earth would be filled, would be taken over by Zulm and by the wrongdoing. And then what would happen? The creatures of the skies and the creatures of the earth, all would be pleased with him. And the sky and the clouds would leave all of the rains on the earth. The sky would keep nothing. And the earth would keep nothing. And such would be the situation, such would be the players, such would be the blessings, that the people living on earth would desire that they're the ones who have gone, who have died. They would wish that they were here. So that they would have also seen the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showering on the Muslims on the earth. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, looking at his son Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and said that no doubt this son of mine is Sayyid, is a leader. Just like Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him a Sayyid. And then Ali ibn Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu continued in saying, وَسَيَخْرُجُ مِنْ صُلْبِهِ رَجُلٌ يُسَمَّى بِاسْمِ نَبِيُّكُمْ That from his lineage, from his children, there would be a person, يُسَمَّى بِاسْمِ نَبِيُّكُمْ Then whose name would be on the name of your Nabi? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يُشْبِهُهُ فِي الْخَلْفِ And that person, whose name would be Muhammad, his character, would be just like the character of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ثُمَّ ذَفَرُ قِسَّةً يَمْلَهُ الْأَرْضَ عَدْلًا And then Ali ibn Talib رضي الله تعالى عنه continued in saying he will fill the earth with justice and equality just like it was filled with injustice and zulm. And Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this world would not end until from my family there would be a king of herbs. And from the other reference, the wordings are that even if there is only one day left before Qiyamah, before the end of this world, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would extend that day, would, would make that day longer until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a person rise from the Ahlul Bayt of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whose name would be on the name on my name, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whose name would be on my name, according to my name, and whose father's name would be like my father's name. And that person, Imam al-Mahdi, would fill the earth with justice and equality, 
just like the earth was filled with injustice and inequality. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Mahdi would be from my lineage, from my children. Ajl al jabhati wa aqn al anfi. His forehead would be broad and his nose would be tall. Yamla al arda qistam wa adla. He would fill the earth with justice and equality. Kama muliyat wulma wa jawra. Just like it was filled with inequality and injustice. Yamla ko sabah sinin. He would rule the earth for seven years. So combining or summarizing these these are hadiths who would come to know that Imam al Mahdi would be one whose name, number one, start with the signs. Number one, Imam al Mahdi would be one whose name would be on the name of Nabi Muhammad. So he must be Muhammad or Ahmad. All from the authentic hadiths I quote. Number two, his father's name would be like the name of Nabi Muhammad wasallam's father. So we are looking for someone named Muhammad bin. Abdullah. Or we are looking for someone Ahmad bin Abdul Hay. Or we are looking for someone Muhammad bin Abdul Hay. Or Ahmad bin Abdul Razak. We are looking for someone whose name would be name combination, including Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's father's name, would be similar. Or someone named Muhammad bin Abdul Karim. Number three, he would be from the lineage of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would be a Sayyid or Hashmi or anyone. It's not necessary that every Sayyid or Hashmi recognize themselves as Sayyid or Hashmi. Many of them don't even know that they are Hashmi or Sayyid. But still, this is a sign we would have to find this out one way or another when the time comes. Number four, he would be Hassani by his lineage and not Husseini by his lineage. He would be from the children of Hazrat Hassan ta'ala He would be from the lineage of Hazrat Ali. He would be from the lineage of Hazrat Fatima. He would be from the lineage of Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he would be from the lineage of Hazrat Hassan ta'ala and not from the lineage of Hazrat Hussein ta'ala according to the hadith I just quoted. So number four, his nose would be tall. And when Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells something to happen, it happens precisely. So you won't have to identify his nose that is it tall or not. It would be so tall that most probably the nose would be the first thing you would recognize on the face of Mahdi. And then his forehead would be broad. There are signs associated with the Mahdi as a person. Now coming to the signs that, are, that would make the Mahdi rise or make the Mahdi popular or be recognizable by the people. And those signs are that the black banners or black visuals would rise from Khurasan's side, would come from Khurasan. And then when the bay'ah is done, an army would be sent to fight him. And that army would be buried in the earth. These two would be the signs when it would be very clear to the people that this person who went from Medina to Makkah and the, some people have taken oath on his end is the Mahdi. So when you see those black banners, it is upon you to show your allegiance with them, to give an oath to them, to show your bay'ah to them, to give your bay'ah to them. Why? You have to show your allegiance, you have to show your bayah, give your bayah to them. Even if you have to go skating on the snow, even if you have to go through the snow, even if you have to go through the harshest of the harshest of the harshest conditions. Why? And then Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not talking to us at that time. Sure, these ahadis reached us, but at that time, the people sitting in front of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were his own companions. And this is the advice Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam giving to his companions. That why would be that case? That would be the case because فَإِنَّهُ خَلِيفَةُ اللَّهُ الْمَهْدِي that within them would be a person that Allah has chosen as his own choice, as his own ruler in the world. Allah's choice on the world, Allah's choice on this earth. And those black visuals would rise from the east. مَنْ قِبَلِ الْمَشْرِقِ 
and the other RV says in Qibal Khurasan. And that those banners, those visuals would be the ones within whom Imam al Mahdi will be. So now coming to the hadith that says that Imam al Mahdi would be from the people of Medina. How could it be the case that Imam al Mahdi would be from the people of Medina and also come with the black visuals from the east? There is no hadith as such that tells us that the person would be from the people of Medina and he goes to the east and comes with the black visuals. No. When he is in Medina, right after that, people find him and try to and force him to take bayah. He flees them and goes to Makkah and they finally are able to force him to take oath from them. So this event has to occur before. So my brothers and sisters, my friends and my elders, this is the event, either you like it or not. Either it is according to my desires or not. Either it falls within my own box, within my own hole or not. But it becomes very certain that Imam al-Mahdi would come from East. He would be among the people who would have black visuals. And when he comes from the East, he goes to Medina. And that's exactly when people recognize that this person, this leader, this notable person has come from the East. At the time of quarrel between three sons of a king. And then people would run to him and ask him to take out. So we know Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is from the Arab world. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Arab. So we want to associate our inner self desires that Imam al-Mahdi must also be from Medina to Manawara. But we would have to give up on our desires. And we would have to accept what Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. Even though the person would ethnically be Arab because he would be from the lineage of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he won't be a resident of Medina to Manawara. He won't be an Arabic speaker. No, my brothers and sisters, no. This is not going to be the case. These two hadiths that I quoted just now clarify it that Imam al-Mahdi would be the resident of East. Surely it doesn't fall within our own frame, within our own box, within our own imagination about that person. But surely this is what Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told us. So we would have to accept it. We cannot try to mold the hadith according to our own intentions, our own desires, no. We have to accept it the way it is. Either you like it or not. Either the Arab world likes it or not. Either the Muslims from all over the world like it or not. Allah's mercy fell on Bani Israel for thousands of years. Many and many Ambiya and Rasul came from Bani Israel. But then Allah changed that. They wanted to come, they wanted the last prophet to come from within themselves. Didn't they? They wanted Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to come from their lineage. But Allah chose Bani Ismail instead of Bani Israel. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came from Bani Ismail. From the people that Bani Israel thought they were better from. They were better then. That was Allah's choice. And now, Makkah al Madina, the land of Hijaz, becomes more important in the center of the world, just like the place of Palestine, Palestine was the center. And the Muslims before Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to pray facing Masjid al-Aqsa in Palestine. Now, Makkah al Mukarramah becomes the center and the Muslims start praying while facing towards Makkah al Mukarramah. Allah changed, Allah changed it and it was Allah's choice. Although everyone, every Muslim, every person who had any knowledge from the previous books had no idea that this would happen. They surely knew that the last prophet would come from the land of the dates and palms. That is Medina al Munawwara. That's why they came to a lots, lots and lots of tribes of Bani Israel had migrated to Medina al Munawwara, hoping that the last prophet would come from their them, from their land. But Allah changed it. This was not within their frame. This was not within their own. This did not fit fit their own glasses. This did not fill, fit in their own frame or expectation. So similarly this time it has now become clear 
that Imam al Mahdi is going to come from the east, you cannot change it. We cannot change it. I'm nobody to make it up. I only try to explain how it is. So Imam al Mahdi is going to come from east with the black visuals, and then Imam al Mahdi, after coming from the east, would be in Medina, and then when people would have recognized the black visuals, then they would come to Imam al Mahdi in Medina al Manawara, but he would not like to become the leader. So he would flee them and go to Makkah, and over there in Makkah al Mukarramah, sitting between Hijrul Aswad and Muqam al Ibrahim, people would force him to take oath from them. So that's where it will happen, and that's how it will happen. Allah.